My name is Vinay Kumar, and I work for Digital Green. Uh, I'll, I'll try and give you a quick overview of what we do and how we have evolved over time. We are just about three and a half, four years old organization, and uh, and how we have scaled up in this period, and what are some of the learnings. Now, since the time is only ten minutes, I'll try to do it quickly. There's some questions we can take later. Okay, so Microsoft, uh, Digital Green was incubated in Microsoft Research and Emerging Markets team uh, way back in 2006. And we were just trying to understand, Rick and Gandhi, who actually led that research, was trying to understand how can we reach smallholder farmers in a way that they can own the information that's given to them and, and do it in a cost-effective manner. I'll talk about that a little later, but this, this uh, research found that the model and approach that we evolved uh, was uh, 10 times more cost effective compared to the training and visit model that was in practice, and also the uptake of new practices was seven times higher compared to the traditional model. And then the, and, and this was done in 40 villages in a uh, South, South Indian state, and then we got some funding from the Gates Foundation, and we scaled this up to 60,000 farmers in 1,200 villages over a period of two and a half years, and which ended in 2012. And simultaneously, we, we were getting a lot of traction, and we were invited by the Ministry of Rural Development in India. Uh, they have launched a very ambitious poverty elevation program called the National Rural Livelihood Mission, uh, which is trying to reach some 200 million people over a period of 10 years. And, and we have partnered with them at the national level. And we're trying to reach 10,000 farmers, uh, 10,000 villages, and a million farmers in the next three and a half years. We are working with them in two major states in India, and we're trying to also work with them in a, across the country, providing support. We're also extending this work in other geographies and domains. So we've been working around agriculture and nutrition convergence. We are also seeing how this approach can be adapted to geographies like we've started working in Ghana, in Ethiopia, we have a few projects, and so, so that's where we are. Uh, basically, our approach has three components. Uh, one is we typically partner with local NGOs or government agencies who have strong links with the local community, who have reasonable scale of operation, and who have domain expertise in the area they're working. And we typically try to identify four to five people in every district who we train in video production. How do you actually produce a video? And, uh, uh, and, and how do you handle the camera? How do you sort of uh, identify a topic in consultation with the farmers? How do you shoot the movie? And, and how do you edit and all that? Is, and that is a five-day training that is given. And then we identify one person from the community in each village who is trained in video dissemination. And these videos are about eight to 10 minutes, which are on locally relevant uh, subjects. And, and these are um, produced by the farmers themselves. And people who feature in these videos are local farmers and people who disseminate these videos using a uh, instrument called Pico Projector is, so I, I need to rush. And, and then, then there is, so, so, so just to give you a sense of the scale, we, we started in, in June, and this is for, for the, uh, the last two, three years, we have scaled up. And basically, as, as I was trying to explain, it has, we have a participatory content production, 
it, it, a lot of participation from the community, from the farmers, and subject matter specialists of our uh, uh, of our partners. And the, then the dissemination is through human mediation, and and we've also developed a fairly powerful technology stack to track how we are doing. So we have developed a system called COCO, which is Connect Online, Connect Offline, where we can actually feed the data when we are in an offline mode, and it gets connected to the server uh, when, when, when we are connected, and we are able to actually have this data on a re near real-time basis, and, and it converts data into interesting analytic dashboards. And as I was saying, and these are the new extensions that we are trying to do with the Ministry of Agriculture in India and partnerships in, in Ethiopia and Ghana. We are leveraging the platform and trying to see how we can bring about convergence between agriculture and nutrition. We are also developing a virtual training institute. So all our 2,800 videos that we have produced are all on the YouTube, and anybody can access them. And we have now tried to kind of uh, put them in a curated thematic form. So if you go to our website and, and click on any subject, you will get all the videos that are there, and you can access them and, and uh, see them. And this is how the partnerships have actually evolved. What we have really found is that in the initial stages, there is a there is a need for heavy touch engagement. And as time passes by, you we, we find that our level of engagement can be reduced. And 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 so a lot of these partners that you find on the right end are the partners that we've been working with for a fairly long time. And these are the new partners, so there is uh, heavy touch and heavy engagement with these partners. These are the geographies we are working, these are some of the lessons that we have learned in, in working these places. Uh, this is the Connect Online, Connect Offline uh, software that we have, reporting system. These are the analytic dashboard. This is the kind of, this, this is all open source and and you can, and this can be seen at various levels, right from the village level up to the national level. And you can see all the data, how many videos have been produced, how many people are participating, how many people have adopted, uh, how many people have not adopted, how many are women, which are the most popular uh, practices, all this data is there. We've also developed what we call as the farmer book, which is like the Facebook for the farmer. And each and every farmer that we reach, the history of the videos that the farmer may have seen, the questions that the farmer has raised, the, the videos that they've adopted, is all recorded uh, in there. And, and since a lot of the, these are in groups, we also know why in a particular group some people have adopted and some have not adopted, and some have adopted at different times. So it also gives us a, in, a interesting data uh, to analyze as to why and how this behavior change at the rural micro level is happening. This is just to give you a sense that this is how the, this farmer book looks like. And every, anyone who has an account in the Facebook can subscribe to any of these farmers, and it will give you uh, updated information on how things are changing in, in their life. We also have this video search page, which we, where we have all these videos, about 2,800 on, on different topics. Yeah, and the questions that people have asked during the disseminations of this video are there. You can see these, these are all can be seen. This is our current recent statistics. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So...